Hey, what is up guys? Pat Washit here, and here is part 2 for 3DS Mats. And today I will be only going over the shortcuts for 3DS Mats. And the reason why I would like to do, th to do this is I want to make your lives easier when you begin modeling. And I can tell you, I can reassure you that if you know these by heart, or the majority of them by heart, your lives will, or your modeling and lives will be a lot easier to model and speed up a lot of time. And I would like to start off with the basic shortcuts for 3ds mats. And for these shortcuts, they will all be dis or they all they will all be described in the description. And if you guys want to come back to this video anytime, I will put down chapters beneath, just like I did in the very first one. So if you guys, because this, this is roughly, I'm, I'm, I'm going to guess here, about 20 minutes. And so I want you guys to come back to this video, click on the time code, and you're there. So I, wanna, I want you guys to save time, uh, or save time by watching this video and clicking through the chapters. So, for the very first short shortcut, and I also mentioned this in the very first one, um, is maximizing your your viewport. And if you, let's say we're in the perspective viewport, we are going to click on the viewport that we want, and you'll see a gold trim or edge along this viewport. And we are going to hold down Alt and hit the W key, W as in water. And in here, you'll see the the viewport just maximize, it'll take up the whole screen. And if you want to back, you'll just go back to Alt W and you go back to the minimized or with all the all the four viewports you have. And this is very this is very handy when you're trying to see a closer view of your work and you don't have to lean in on your computer screen just to see what it might look like up close. So this is a lot better for up close detail and fine tuning the model. Uh, the next one I want to talk about, this will involve with a subject model. And if you want to uh, create a certain type of model, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to create a sphere here. And it's under the geometry tab in the top right. So a little sphere pop up or sphere tab. Click the sphere tab. If you don't see these options, go to the drop down menu and make sure standard primitives is selected. Under there, you're going to put sphere. This bot should pop up, and let's not worry about all these uh, these dimensions here. We'll just create whatever we can have for standard. You're going to left click and hold, and then you're going to drag. And this will just create the diameter of the sphere, however big you want, doesn't matter. So I'm going to create a sphere, and when you're done, let go, and you're done. And so the first one I want to talk about is the WT, W as in water, again. Uh, this will allow you to move the object along a certain axis. So if you go to the Z axis, you can move it up and down. X will be, in our perspective, left and right. And also Y, which should be forward and back. So if you would like to be able to move along two different axes, for example, Z and X, there's a little box for the move tool. There's a little box between all of them. There's a little midway point. If you hover over this box, <clears throat> if you hover over this box, the, the two axes we want will turn yellow or gold. And this is where you would left click and hold, and you can move. And it, it stays between the Z and X axis only. As you notice, it does not move forward or backwards. It'd be the same thing with Z and Y, and also X and Y. So you can do that with that as well. Um, also, I want you to, to I want you guys to pay attention to the color coding here. The Z axis will always be blue, X will always be red, and Y will always be green. And with this said, I'd like to move on to the rotation tool. Rotation tool as is for the E key, E as an eel. Uh, you'll see a sphere pop up with different lines going around different parts of the sphere. And then you'll see blue for the middle one going horizontally. You'll see X in this case for me. Uh, X is closest to me on the right. It'll be going forwards and backwards. And Y will be going left and right. So here you can rotate on a certain axis, or I'm sorry, on a certain axis, sorry. Uh, and you can rotate it and you'll see what this red, uh, What's the word called? You see what this red guide popping out telling you how much you're moving it. And, uh, and also for your guides as well, you'll see numbers move 
Okay, and right now you see a lot of decimal points moving, and that can be very confusing. And I'd like to discuss to discuss something really quick after I mention this. Um, just like the move tool, there's a midway point. If you if you go between two different axes, let's say the Y nets, uh, you can move in a certain direction, as you can tell. It's not it's not limited to a certain axis. You can move in those two types of different or those two different axes. Um, and what I'd like to discuss now, let's say you want to rotate a certain amount. And I'm I should have created created a bot to make this easier, so it's um, easier to recognize. I'm gonna create a bot real quick. Uh, I'm going to left click and drag to create the base, let go, and move up to create the height. Okay, so I'm gonna move this over a little bit to get in perspective. And let's say I wanted to move this up 90 degrees on the Y axis. Um, if I wanted to move this up 90 or negative 90 in this case, um, I'm gonna be fiddling with this a lot okay and there's two different ways to do this with or without this shortcut now the shortcut to do this with is the letter a and a you should see a little high, uh, bots pop up on blue on the top and it's called angle snap toggle and I'm assuming the the default one is either five or ten degrees I think I set mine to five so I can get more options with it. And with this on, you can go to an exact measurement without the decimal points. And boom, I have 90 degrees, and it's all done. So I, and I, you can do this with other, whatever number you want. Okay, so you can do 180 if you wanted to, or um, whichever you might desire. Um, the other way to do it without angle snap tools is make sure you have the rotation tool selected and come down here to the X. Um, let's say we want to rotate this 90 degrees on the X axis. Hit 90, and you have 90 right there. So you can do angle snap and rotate it, or you can just come down to this XYZ uh, coordinate number uh, input and type it there. And don't forget, you can do, always do negative, and you can always do positive. Um, as I mentioned this, um, we, don't, we, we will quickly go back to our move tool, and I will show you something very handy. Um, if you type in zero for all of them, X, Y, and Z, this is moving this object, this bots, to zero, degree, or zero, zero coordinates on the X, zero on the Y, and zero on the Z. So it's pretty much centering it out. Now, if you type in 10 on the X, it's to move it to the 10 uh, on, on the X scale, uh, or X coordinate, it will move, or X axis, it will move up 10. Now, let's say you are comfortable with where this was at, and let's say you wanted to move this up, let's, let's move this to a, a, a weird number, let's say 4.069 in this case, um, whatever number it might be, let's say you want to move this up 10, and let's say in this case it would be to 14.069, uh, what will happen is if you type in 10, it's going to move to the to number 10 on the Z axis, okay, so you're not going to hit 14. If you wanted to go up 10 and add to the, no the, the original number, there's a little square to the left called Absolute Mode Transform Type In. What this will do, if you type in 10, it's to move it up 10. So it'll be plus 10 to whatever the original number might be. So if we go back to the original mode, you'll see 14.069. So this is very handy if you want to move everything up by a certain number or a digit, decimal point, whatever. Um, so this is very handy for that certain type of stuff. Um, with that said, I'd, I would like to move on now to the steel tool and the steel tool will be the letter R, R as in rat and again you'll see the color code again for Z, X and Y and you can steal amongst different axes here okay and with these different axes uh, for some reason I don't know why but the if if you if you're working with a bots in this case the base will not grow um, if you because the base is the bottom here on the it's for, it's on the y axis right now, um, the base will not go lower than where it started. So keep that in mind. You would have to go into edible poly or mesh to move that down on the other side. And by that I mean this side here. Um, and so you can transform it along a certain axis. And then there's always in between. You can do it for example x and y, and you can draw it like that. Um, or you can do the whole thing if you go to the center, uh, the whole pyramid. Uh, will height or lighten up in yellow, and you can just drag and raise or shrink. 
Uh, so that's very handy. And the other one I'd like to discuss is the squash tool. And the steel tool has three different ones. Um, the very bottom one, which is the one with the smaller rectangle on top of the longer one. This is the squash tool. It says select and squash if you, ho if you hover over it. And what this will do, if you, let's say, decrease on the z-axis, it will squash down as if it's melting. Or like you're, I don't know, maybe, I, I kind of think of it as like pancake batter or an ice cube melting or something. I don't know. Um, so this can be very handy if you're doing animation and you're trying to save time. Uh, it, also, it also depends on what you're trying to achieve. So if you want to keep everything uniform, I recommend hitting hitting the R key again and going back to the one with two arrows. And this will keep everything uniform. Uh, so, And I do not know the big difference between the one with the arrow pointing in the right top corner and the uniform tool. Um, this one says it's select and uniform scale. Uh, this one does the same thing, you know, it, it goes up and down stuff, and the same thing with the non-uniform tool, if you hover it, non-uniform steel tool. It does the same exact thing, so I really don't know what the difference might be, but, uh, you know, they both do the same thing from my experience. So use one of those two tools for your steel tool. Um, the next one I'll have to talk about is the letter Z. Let's say I am zoomed out all the way. And let's say you wanted to, instead of zooming back in with the, uh, I'll talk about the shortcut later, but let's say instead of zooming back in with the shortcut, all you have to do is hit Z, Z as in Z, and it will come back to view uh, focused uh, in, your, in your viewport. Uh, and this is very handy if you're trying to model a certain vertice or polygon or zoom in on a certain model in the scene. So this will save you a lot of time. And with talking about zooming in and stuff, we're going to talk about now camera movement and stuff. And we are while this uh, cube is selected, uh, we are going to talk about orbiting. Orbiting, picture, picture the uh, Super Bowl happening, and you're in the blimp, and you're looking down at the stadium. The stadium will stay still, or it will rotate, but the, the blimp will be moving around it. It'll be the same thing with orbiting. Uh, if you hold down the Alt key and hold down the middle mouse, you can orbit around. So as you notice, the cube is staying in center view. It's 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 rotating, you know, but the camera is doing all the work. It's moving around it. And so you can look around the bottom, you can do the top, whatever you desire. So this is very handy for looking at different angles rather than going to your viewports and doing it there. Um, viewports can still be handy if you're trying to align something correctly, uh, but for, for basic modeling, just stick to orbiting. Um, the next one I'd like to talk about is uh, panning. A pan is when the camera uh, is moving along a certain axis and it's restrained to it. And the camera will move, in this case, from our perspective, left to right or right to left. And the, the model will be moving in and out of focus uh, or out of the way of the scene. So let's say, instead of making this the main photo seat, let's say we wanted to look to the left of it and create something there. We can pan and move our mouse to the right, and now we have a blank spot where we can focus on and create a certain model or sphere, whatever you desire, right there. Um, and the other one I'll have to also discuss um, is zooming in and zooming out. And there's two ways to do this. Uh, the first way is very easy. If you move up or down, on the mouse wheel, you'll zoom out. You, you will zoom out, and you'll zoom in. And as you notice, it's pretty choppy. Okay, so it, it's it's okay if you're trying to do basic zooms, uh, but if you want to do very fine-tuned zooms, like for example, zoom in as far as you can without going inside it, uh, the best way to do this is hold down Alt, Control, and hold down the middle mouse button, and this will allow you to zoom in and out very smoothly. And so now you can fine-tune this and say, well, I'm perfect right here. I know it's pretty close, but for, for example purposes, this is pretty, you know, this is what you would want to do. Uh, with mouse wheel, you can tell it's very choppy. It's almost as if um, I am using different lenses. I'm taking one lens off and put another one on, zooming in, you know, and, and doing different focal lengths for this. So it's very choppy. Uh, on the other hand, this one was pretty smooth. So it just, it just depends on what you're trying to do and which one you're comfortable with. Uh, the next one I want to talk about is the ViewTube. 
Uh, in the top right of every viewport in 3ds mats, there's a th there's a little cube up there, and right now, uh, no pun intended, right now we are in the right view, and if you click on this, it will center you to the right view. So if you're trying to look at something on a model, and you want to see something from a d f directly uh, from a certain viewpoint, this would be the tool for you. And what you can do, there's little arrows on the sides of it. Um, in this case, four top, bottom, left, right. Let's say we wanted to move to the to the right, and this will put us to the back view. See, it, it snaps directly to this cube and allows us to see certain views. So for example, if you want to see a side view of your character, you would just go to, let's say, the left view, and you would see the side of the face and see the whole side of the body. Um, you'd also do the back, or I'm sorry, bottom, and also pay attention to the text. As you notice that the top viewport the top is being read from bottom to top, and also you notice everything is like a compass. And so if you want to see everything correctly, you want north to be north. North right now is on west. So we want to rotate that. Uh, with, let's click on the on the right arrow to the, to the right of top. This will put us to front, and then put the top one one more time, and we are back at top. And now we're reading this correctly, and north and south is oriented in the right directions. So, this YouTube is meant to make your life easier on exact camera uh, locations and views. So you don't have to use it all the time. Again, the main one you would probably probably be using is the orbiting tool, which is Alt Middle. So as you can tell, the YouTube is moving with the camera. So that's pretty much the basic camera movement stuff. And the final one I want to talk about for cameras is the grid. If you select a different viewport, let's say in this case the front one, if you hit the letter G, G as in goat, uh, the grid will disappear. Now the purpose of this is if you're trying to see the silhouette of this object, um, you can hide and turn also turn it back, back on by hitting the same key. And it allows you to see the object and you can see the lines and outlines of it and it makes your life a lot easier and also on the eye. Um, ten, you usually want to use the grid if you want to align it to a certain measurement, like for example, if you're trying to do an exact measurement on a certain object, um, you, you can make the grid spacing a certain measurement, for example, one foot. And if you want something to be five feet, you would have a, this, for example, this box cover five cubes, which equals five feet. So that pretty much sums it up for all the, the basic shortcuts for 3DS mats. And for next week, I'll be doing number three, which will be primarily about modeling shortcuts and also tips and tricks you can use for modeling. Thank you for watching, guys, and I appreciate all your ratings, likes, comments, and favorites and subscriptions. Um, and if you have any questions, please feel free to comment below, and I will do my best to help you out. So thanks for watching, and you guys have a nice weekend. Bye-bye.